Hello and welcome to Bristol Sport TV, our weekly roundup from across the sporting group. Well, this week I'm pleased to say I'm joined by two of our players in the sporting group, and that is Corey Smith from Bristol City Men and Daniel Ladozzi from the Flyers basketball team. Uh, hi to you both. Great to see you both. Good to have you on the programme. Thumbs up there. Good you can hear us. Uh, Corey, we'll Hello. start with you first. Um, obviously, the big news is that football has returned to training. What was it like to get back out there on Monday? Yeah, so it's 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 been a it's been amazing to be back. You know, back with the boys. Obviously, all two meters apart, keeping our social distancing, but being on the pitch, being able to touch a football, um, uh, it's been it's been great. And uh, uh, the first the first few sessions have been tough. But the the sports science team and and the physios and stuff have have, have given given us all uh, lots of detailed plans and we've been working really hard while we've been away to be honest. Um, so all the boys have come back in in really good shape and yes, it's been great. And like I said, the big shout out to the physios um, for all their hard work and uh, Mark Asher and Sam Morse, everyone for obviously getting us back to this point. Um, and it feels like a really safe environment to be in. Um, uh, there's different ways to get to the pitches, a red route and a purple route, so there's lots of space. And um, obviously the testing, um, it's a bit it's a bit different. Obviously having tests on, on a Monday and a Thursday is what we'll, we'll be doing. Um, so yeah, it is strange, but it's great to be back. And uh, obviously it's exciting because we're in such a, uh, exciting position with nine games to go you know one point outside the playoffs uh i kind of like that we're that we're that we're one point outside because it gives that that you kind of have something to go for you know them teams uh um in the playoffs you know they're they're already in there so we've got we've got we got to try and hunt them down now yeah, hunt them down. You have, and and it's it's kind of interesting with the with the weather, particularly uh, certainly at the opening part of the week. This hot weather that we've had, it almost feels like this is a mini pre-season training. You know, like almost going back to July when you had pre-season in in Florida. It almost feels like this is a pre-season to write. Let's ready. Let's ready to go. Yeah, no, honestly, it's literally it's so hot. It's so hot, and obviously, as you know, when you're running and stuff in in the heat. It's not easy, but um, it's something we have to make sure we get used to because if the games do resume, hopefully we are going to be playing in this heat. So um, it will be different uh, with the weather as well as um, obviously no fans and, and stuff like that. But it, it, it's something that uh, I think we've we've got a good, really good squad of players and obviously with, a, with the five sub rule as well, um, a young fit squad, it, it could really suit us, you know. So... Um, uh, yeah, hopefully we can use it to our advantage. Mm, yeah, let, let's hope you can. I mean, we'll we'll talk more a bit about how the training has gone and, and what lockdown has been like. Daniel, for you guys, obviously, in the basketball side of things, uh, there's no sign of a resumption to the season. Um, but in terms of coping with lockdown and how it's been, how you've stayed fit, because obviously there is always the likelihood, you know, you're going to come back and, and you're both professional athletes. How, how have you found it, Daniel? And, and, and what things have you been doing to try and keep yourself fit and sane? Stay fit and sane. That's a really good question. So um, I have a couple of resistant bands, uh, some jump ropes, then there's body weight workouts and stuff um, that our SSC fitness uh, personal trainer has been send, sending us and stuff like that. Um, but other times I, I'll be running, you know, wake up in the morning, run, uh, do like cardio based workouts and try to stay engaged physically in the sense where, you know, at least it, it's hard to really replicate like in game or in practice sort of training. So um, I guess the I guess it's all it all comes down to you and just being able to at least make it more manageable manageable and don't lose too much of it. Um, outside of sport, just been staying busy like with reading, writing, um, and just trying to like put other goals and things that I that I in my in my own mind that I want to work towards. You know, because sometimes outside of sport outside of sport, you know, there's there's a lot of other things to think about. And I'm always one of those kind of guys, like I never, like I've always played sport. I love playing basketball and don't worry, I, I enjoy it. But equally, 
there's also that side that needs to take on further investment. Like, what would you want to do outside of sport, you know, and invest it into that area of life a little bit. So I've just been thinking about stuff like that and thinking about what other, what other things that, that I could do to inspire and motivate and do the other things that I do alongside with, like, my motivational speaking and stuff like that. So, yeah, just been working on stuff like that. Mm. Well, aside from the, from the learning, I know you've been trying to stay uh, in touch with the ball skills, so to speak. And I know Flyers have been putting out various tips on those defensive drills and things that you can do within the confines of when it was in your own home, but also just outside. Ball skills wise, Corey, you've got to clear something up. Now, yeah. I interviewed Lee Johnson and we yeah. were reflecting on this ama amazing little bit of skill that you did of um, getting a tea bag into a cup. Now, Lee cast doubt yeah. on whether or not it was real. So you need to clarify here and now, there was no like oh, see-through thread that hooked the tea bag into the mug. <laughs> he, he, he suggested wow. that Hattie might have been fishing it into the mug for you. You know, I almost want to make you stand up and recreate it, but that would be impossible. <laughs> yeah, yeah unless, you've got about, unless you've got about half an hour, we won't be able to do that, but... It was, definitely, it was definitely real. Um, yeah, I went down in the morning and uh, had a few attempts and then Hats was in the corner videoing me. Um, it took me about 15, 20 minutes, to be honest. Uh, but, I mean, I've seen a lot of them and I feel like, I still feel like mine was the best one. A couple of kick-ups and, and a volley in. It absolutely I'll, I'll... was the best one. Yeah, so... Um, <laughs> I'll definitely be having words with a gaffer um, about doubting me on that one. <laughs> exactly. Well, you are... yeah, shocked and horrified. Yeah, Was you kicking uh... up uh, toilet tissue like some of the other guys were in the beginning of this, uh, after the whole thing and, what, and whatnot? Yeah, no. I, I, saw, I saw them doing the, the toilet roll one, um, and I thought, what can I do different? And I can't remember where I saw, I saw someone doing like flicking the tea bag in and I went to make a cup of tea in the morning and it just came to me I was like oh, let me just try and get this in, in the cup and I was, I was I was doing it for a bit the boys were cheering for me um and I managed to get a really good one in and yeah it was it was uh, it was good fun and a lot of people enjoyed it I know all the all the city, all the city fans um enjoyed it and yeah it was it's good fun and kept people engaged you know Obviously, uh, this, this pandemic has happened at a time when actually technologically we were probably best placed to deal with it because there has been so much social media and interaction on Instagram, but also people able, you know, to connect via Zoom calls. And I know all of you guys have had uh, team Zoom calls and stuff. It, it's actually been one of the few positives that we've perhaps got to know people a bit better and actually communities have come together a bit more. Oh, 100%. And that's that's one of the key aspects because of everything that's going on now. The only thing we can do in the in the face of like some sort of battle or some sort of adversity, especially if, if we're all going through this together, is to come together. And with, like you said earlier, with the connections of people connecting on Instagram or social, any social media account and Zoom calls, like there's still that face-to-face -face interaction. So this, you still feel like it's, it's like, it's more intimate, isn't it? Like it's just being able to sit here like, with you guys as well and just kind of like talk on this. Cause it's like we, outside of this, we won't ever get, get a chance to like actually sit here and do it. But being able to do it now just makes it, makes that human interaction so much more appreciative. Yeah, and Dean, I, I was talking to Dean Holden, the assistant coach for um, City Men, and he was saying that he's actually connected with people that normally he wouldn't have perhaps even been able to get FaceTime with or, or calls with. Actually, because mm. of the lockdown, he sent messages and, and, and hooked up with other coaches from across the world and gained insight from them at a time when normally, if we were all busy with our working weeks and match days and things, he wouldn't have had that time. So it's it's kind of an interesting one to, to come out of it, really. I, I'm sure you've been enjoying Coach Burns's cooking classes, Daniel. <laughs> hey, I see. I see them do a, a do a couple of sessions. It's actually quite interesting, but it's not what he's cooking. It's like some of the stuff that he's saying, along with what with what he's cooking, that just makes it so much like much more enjoyable to watch and listen to. He was making some like some some steak, some steak bits, like a steak bit sandwich or something like that. 
And just some of the stuff that he was saying, you know, I was like, that's Coach Bursby, you know. But, hey, you know, he's, he's, <laughs> he's, his personality is like... <laughs> he's come through as this new social media star, I think, for the Flyers basketball team as, uh, yeah, his cooking skills. I guess one of the things to come out of this lockdown is a few people have been watching and consuming a bit more television, um, one of which uh, we referenced last week, The Last Dance and the Michael Jordan documentary on Netflix. Corey, you've been an avid follower of that. It's been fantastic, hasn't it? Yeah, well, I actually started watching it uh, a few days ago. Um, I tried to save it because everyone was telling me how motivational it was and, and stuff. And I, I tried to, the first few weeks, take my mind away from football, you know, relax and just think about other things. And I thought, let me save this for, for just before when I go back to training. So it kind of triggers me to, to go straight into it. And I've been watching it the last few days and it's, it, yeah, it's brilliant. It's, uh, his mindset obviously is, 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 is something else and, and the things that he done. Um, I really enjoy basketball anyway. I, I was, I was gutted when the season kind of got cut short because I've been enjoying watching, watching the basketball, um, this season, getting into it more and more each year, to be honest. Um, so yeah, it, it, it's great, but I hear Daniel hasn't even watched it yet. So that's what I'm surprised about. <laughs> Daniel, you grew yeah, yeah, up yeah. with MJ. I grew up, yeah, I grew up, um, I grew up like watching, not watching him, but like hearing bits about him and stuff like that. And uh, if you, I mean, if you, if you take a nice look ar around his career and stuff like that and what he'd done for the sport, I mean, he still holds records now and he played way short a season. He only, I think he only played like 13, 14 or 15 seasons, something along that. And, you know, you have got, and you have guys like LeBron, Kobe, Carmelo, all that sort of stuff. Like he's he's played a shorter um, he's played a, he's had a shorter career, and he, it's crazy because like his records he's still holding them and he's he's still considered one of the greatest of all times or AKA the goat. So it's like uh, it's like looking at it and 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 seeing how he used to play um, is quite interesting. But then the closest person to replicate that of our modern age was Kobe Bryant. So. I think it would be interesting if, well, unfortunately for, unfortunate news for Kobe, but if they came up with a document, documentary about Kobe Bryant, then it would be almost similar to Michael Jordan's um, yeah. documentary. I think Kobe, yeah. um, I was watching one of the episodes where Kobe referred to, and this is not a spoiler, obviously, Corey, but Kobe was talking about the fact that actually he hated being compared to Michael Jordan because he said Michael Jordan gave me everything, gave me my career because he was so giving of his time as one of the longer serving members of the NBA when he was the youngster coming through. You know, I think he was 19 when he played, played in the first uh, NBA championships. And he said Michael taught him everything he needed to know and anything that he's achieved in his career is because of Michael. Yeah, when I watched it, yeah, that's... Yeah, it's amazing that uh, the influence he said that he had on him. Um, that's just something else. Me now, obviously, as an experienced player, it's something that I, I, like little things like that, you try and take on board and you realise, you know, you have kind of been somewhere for a long time and if you can help someone else and, like, raise their game by giving them a little 1% or 2% of experience that you've got, um, that's that's a, that's an amazing feeling, I think. Um and obviously, we've got a lot of young midfielders, uh, young, hungry midfielders coming through with a lot of talent. And um, I definitely feel like that's what I try to do, just just try and give them my little bit of experience because their, their talent is is amazing. Yeah, I mean, I guess that's a, it's a really interesting takeout from that series, isn't it? I mean, Corey, of course, you're, I think you're our longest serving first team player now. So you are, you know, you are the stalwart of the team. So it is thinking about how you can help bring those younger players on. But of course, that, that improves the overall performance of the team. And every little bit counts as we go into those last nine games of regular season. Yeah, 100%. Um, like I said, like some of the young players that we've got, um, not only in, in my kind of position, but uh, all around the squad, is, uh, the recruitment over the last year has really been, last few years have really been geared for the, for the future. And um, we've got some, some, some amazing talents coming through. Um, but they need time and they need people with experience to, to kind of help them and guide them. A um, few have gone on loan and, and got a bit of experience this year, which is great. Um, and I think it just holds the, the club in good stead for the future. Um, um, and yes, it's my job now to, 
to try and help them and guide them and make them the best players I can. Um, and obviously, along with playing well myself, um, that's that's all I can do. So I remember when I was a young player, and it was absolutely it was massive for me um, when when a, when a, when you could feel that an older player kind of gave you advice that had been there and and that he believed in you. You know, it gave you that confidence to go and express yourself. Mm. Do you think that that's something? I mean, is there is there one player that reflecting back on say the time when you were coming through, Corey, that that there was a player that took that role? Yeah, I mean, I do, I do think um, obviously you have to have talent, and I think when I was young, uh, like one thing I always done was was worked really hard, and I feel like the the senior players could see that. Um, obviously, when I was younger, I was at I was at Norwich. Um, there was the likes of Grant Holt. Obviously, a, a massive player for Norwich City, um, who was who was great to me. Um, Russell Martin, who's the MK Dons manager now. Uh, players like John Otsemabor and Daryl Russell, know uh, all those guys. But at the time, they was they was brilliant. I remember like John Otsemabor. He was a senior player, and I was like 18, 19, um, broke into the team, and he'd he'd come pick me up and take me in his in his uh, Audi and I was like, whoa, look at this. And he'd take me to go and get a fresh haircut. Um, like Daryl Russell, a player, he'd pretty, he's like, yeah, come around my house. He cooked me up some like Jamaican Caribbean food, just little things like that, you know, it just uh, made me feel comfortable around them and know that I was accepted and then I could express myself, you know, but, I've, um, and you know, that's the kind of thing that, that I learned when I was younger. And now I'm, I'm at a more senior age. I'm, I can I can hopefully bring that kind of thing to the youngsters, uh, um, and have been bringing that kind of thing to the youngsters at at, at City. Yeah, well, uh, if one thing you can bring to them is maybe some guidance on haircuts, because I uh, understand there's some really dodgy ones going on. <laughs> I don't think I can say anything. About hair. Yeah, did you, let me see that. You do it yourself. Well, have, <laughs> Having spoken to Lee yesterday, he referred to, I think he referred to Marley as looking like Screech. I think he referred to Callum as, as looking like the kid off the Wonder Years. Hanwar, yeah. I think, just has a really big headband. Yeah. I mean, Han, Han, just, look, Han just looks the same. Um, yeah, there's a funny, there's a few funny ones. Marley, like he said, uh, the Screech shout, that was, that was funny, to be fair. Um, who else is there? Ash has got the blonde, the blonde dreadlocks now. I don't know if you've seen them. No, he's, I hadn't seen that. He's, uh, yeah, he's got the blonde dreadlocks, so you won't really see that. Um, <laughs> yeah, there's a few funny ones. There's a few funny ones. Jamie Patterson's got a big, looks like a big wig coming down the front. I think it looks pretty good, but some people are saying it's a bit suspect. I don't know. We'll see. His looks like a bit 90s retro kind of, you know, that big sort of floppy hair over the front. Maybe he's embracing that. Daniel, you, yours is looking finely coiffed, I have to say. You're looking very finely coiffured. You know what, you know what it is? It's because my <laughs> partner. Yeah, my part. Yeah, that too. But my partner's been learning how to cut hair. I told her, like, you're going to have to cut my hair, so... She ended up learning how to like cut it. And she what she did was she just watched some videos on YouTube and like, yeah, yeah. boom. And then she just got it down after a couple of tries and whatnot. So it's all it's all good over here. Nice. Yeah, yeah. That, you gotta be happy with that. There you go. There you go, Corey. That's yeah. what you've got to do in the household. Well, honestly, like, yeah, Hats is she's been begging me to to cut my hair on uh, on Instagram for like two months. She wants me to do it on the live <laughs> and stuff, but. I can't do it. I can't let her do it. I don't. I don't. I don't think she's got it in her locker. She did used to be a hairdresser, to be fair. So she should. She should have an eye for it. But I I'm think nervous. Hattie would they be absolutely great with it. And maybe, maybe I know that you were doing the fundraising quiz on Friday. The 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 fundraising quiz for Robin's Foundation. Maybe here's the idea: get Hattie do it on Insta and do it as a fundraiser. There you go. There's the incentive oh, you need. You. <laughs> <laughs> You oh, shall put you on. And I'll lay down 20 now. <laughs> oh, no. We'll oh, talk about man. <laughs> So much pressure, Lisa. That is a lot of pressure you're trying to put on him. <laughs> oh, I know. No. I might have to edit it out later. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> how, was, how was the quiz? How did you find the quiz, uh, Corey, on Friday? Yeah, no, it's good. I mean, uh, Ollie Slim's just 
he was so funny and he's he's good fun and um yeah it's it's great great way to get all the fans engaged and have people calling in and you know it's 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 a good way of keeping everyone together like we said um it's a lot kind of brought a lot of a lot of positives in a way as well with people kind of thinking outside the box now of other ways we can we can engage and 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 uh have fun and be real creative so um yeah it, it's been brilliant and obviously raised a lot of money as well so that's that's really important in these times there's a lot of charities that are that are struggling a bit um obviously people are uh, a bit cautious with their money having 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 wage cuts deferrals furloughs losing their jobs it's hard to for charities to kind of build that money so um yeah, it was a great, great way to, to build some money and help help people. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the community and charity side of that, you know, where I was talking about technology and social media is one of the positives. I mean, certainly I've seen it from Ashton Gate and from the group. It's been something that we're so proud of that they've managed to deliver this group wide effort. And I, I, I'm sure you guys saw last week was the 10,000th meal that we delivered into our community of, of people that need help. And, and to see those food parcels and stuff going out to two, three times a week from the stadium into kids that we know desperately need that help it is, a, is an incredible achievement. Um, Daniel, in terms of flyers and, and, and certainly from your background, that that whole food poverty piece is is such a key thing of how you can stay in touch with people during a time of when everyone else is locked down and and as you say, Corey, charities are getting squeezed. Oh yeah, hands down, hands down. Um, in fact, I work with a a organisation uh, con called Consortium for Street Children, and um, put it in a nutshell, they're basically a a uh, foundation that works within the rights of children throughout the world, not just here in England, but throughout the world. And um, you'd be interested, it'll be interesting to to find out some more information in detail, because some of the things that you hear about kids these days in terms of like poverty, homelessness, or um, third world situations is completely, it's completely mind blowing. So it's good to hear that you know, with organizations and charities trying to do whatever they can and Ashton Gate and, um, and, and things like that, trying to make a, I guess, deliver something of positive purpose. Like it's, it's good. It's definitely good to hear because there's so many kids out there that don't have that sort of resource or have that sort of um, background or sort of like support system put in place that can deliver their needs. So yeah, it's always good to hear when things like that are being held and especially those that are close to you are doing that sort of thing for a positive purpose. Yeah, I mean, the key thing with the, with the group wide effort relief from here was making sure that, say, through the Robbins Foundation and through the Bears Foundation, because we had access to uh, knowing which children are more in need in terms of the coaching programs mm -hmm. that were run through schools. That was, I guess, where they had a head start. And Corey, I know you're probably more familiar with some of the work they've done. Uh, Maca came down and did some of the food packing on one of the days of actually knowing that it's going also to kids that are you know a part of the family if you like already you know they are already a part of the robbins foundation and and say their fit and fed programs or their school programs it was a way of definitely getting into an area and i, I think hanwell gave uh, some of his boots away didn't he corey yeah yeah i think uh han gave his boots i mean a lot of the boys have been doing doing little individual things uh, i think callum done a online like computer game streaming for a charity and other, other boys have done different things and tried to help out in in whatever way we kind of can um me Casey and Rory did like a there was the butchers and you know a local a local business uh, we tried to help them out do a few little videos um there's been loads of stuff from the boys and yeah fair play to um obviously I see I see like you said Maka um Scotty Murray Matt Parsons who's all, all them down there packaging the food delivering the food. I know a lot of the boys have contributed um, uh, money to go and buy the food for, for, for um, the charity. So it's just been a real yeah. team effort and um, it's really brought everyone together in a way, I think, to be honest. Um, and, you know, them, them, them children uh, as well that are, that are being fed are just uh, are obviously going to be City fans for the rest of their life. And it's, it's great to, you know, um, 
give something to them and 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 they they will continue to support us and you know there could be a there could even be a player for for one of the Bristol sport sports teams coming out of that and that would be really special so um yeah it's it's like I said there has been positive through, through this as well yeah. Well, I know, uh, Corey, as a, as a father of two young children, lockdown, of course, for families, it presents its own unique set of uh, uh, opportunities, shall we say. How has it been in the household? Uh, I can hear them outside, so they're obviously playing. Have you been doing a lot of football with them or different sports? Uh, yeah, everything, to be honest, everything. Uh, uh, I can't lie, it's hard to constantly keep keep them entertained, as any parent will know, you know. Um but they wanted to try a bit of everything. Uh, we've tried, um, we've tried football. We've done a bit of boxing, done a bit of basketball, a bit of rugby. Um, we spent the first uh, seven weeks of lockdown at, at, um, at some family members, and um, we they've got like a trampoline and stuff like that. So they were for all hours of the day, um, and then obviously just trying to do a little bit of education in between. They're only young, they're four and two, so they don't really go to school yet. But um, uh, it's been nice to, to see them develop. You know, Otis is four, so he's, his reading's uh, developed and he's getting really proud of, like, he rings his, his, his nan in the evening and he'll ring her a couple of pages of his book. So just little stuff like that's been been quite quite special, really. Um, and they've definitely enjoyed spending, spending a lot of time with, with their mum and dad, even... You know, even though you can't go to all these different places, that I don't think they they really care. All they care about is just is kind of being with you. So I think that's what we've learned from this. Yeah, I think that's a bit that that a lot of children will take and families will take is that moment, precious time that can never be uh, regrouped. You talked about the fact that when lockdown happened, you were actually away. I think with your your wife's. Uh, sister and her and her family and and obviously there would have been a little bit of uh, jostling of sports because I think your brother-in-law is Joe Launchbury, the rugby player, international rugby player. So, which sport won out with the children, or did they just do what all children do, which is go to the opposite sport that their parent plays? <laughs> um, yeah. So we like obviously uh, when we when we first broke up, um, me and my partner thought we'd quickly visit because we thought if this does happen, we won't be. Able to see our parents so we took a quick trip to go see both our parents and then went to see his sister and uh brother-in-law and and obviously yeah he plays rugby and we were staying there for a couple of days and then like we thought well their house is a, a bit nicer than ours they got a nice big garden and, <laughs> and everything. Well, ours is a little bit tight so um we thought well why don't we just stay here for a little while um so we ended up staying for I think seven weeks. We we locked down together. You know everything was was uh, it was good fun. And like you said, we got uh, me and Big Joey six foot six foot six six foot seven. Uh, it was good fun to be fair. He was out in the garden. Me and me and my little boy against uh, him and his little girl playing two on two football matches or family football matches. Then we'd go into rugby. Then we'd go into basketball and me and him was doing little running drills together you know um uh, uh he had to he had to practice some passing so i had to do some uh rugby drills with him where he had to get down pick up the ball pass to me so it's not every day you get to do that with a england international rugby player so um really? it was it was definitely it was definitely it was definitely good fun and um yeah it was like another memory like we said um the, the children will definitely never forget that time that we that we all spent together. So it, it's been it's been good fun. One of the interesting things that that comes out of this as well is kids having access to you know parents have suddenly had to be creative and you know badminton nets, rugby passing drills, basketball hoops. You know suddenly there is more accessibility or more awareness perhaps of different sports. And Daniel, I guess for a sport like basketball, I think the success of say the Last Dance shows there is an appetite for it. So it could be quite exciting coming out of, of this lockdown for, for basketball, particularly as a sport. It's interesting because I was watching this video the other day. It was in 19, I think 96, 97, when Sky Sports used to sponsor the BBL. And there was this guy that was um, that was talking. It was, it was a, uh, a host or whatever. And he was basically just explaining basketball in England in a nutshell. And 
few things that he just pointed out was, well, one, it's the pathway from a kid growing up, you know, and, and going through the experience of the journey of basketball. Two, it's the type of coaching that's here in England. Um, and three, you know, if if there's there's a reason why kids are more likely to gravitate towards America is simply because the coaching is better, the quality, well, the quality of sport in general is so much more better. Um, and so some kids, like, you know, they have that dream or they have that inspiration, but the quality and, and the pathway isn't, like, as clean and as effective as possible. So, um, yeah, I think I really would love to, like, see how this does turn out. And I would love to, like, be a part of um, or try to have anything different. It's just it's trying to see where the problem lies within. So that way the thing that's, like, stopping basketball from progressively growing in, a, in an effective way, um, that way, like, it, that could be cleaned up. And it could be made fun for everybody. I mean, it's, it's not like it's not fun now, but it will be made fun in terms of, like, the dream and the success aspect of it. Has, has the break, though, made you... I know in one of the um, interviews I was having with um, someone a, a few weeks ago, it was talking about how this pause or cessation in their, their sports had made them almost fall in love again with their sports because they were missing it so much. It's interesting hearing you talk about, I mean, I know, Corey, you were desperate to get back out there. When, Lee, when, I, when I saw Lee's interview, you could see all of you guys were bouncing to be back kicking a football around. Yeah, no, that's, yeah, I think, like I said, I tried to, I tried to zone out for a couple of weeks because I knew it could probably take a while. Um, but then I just found myself like gravitating, like what, going on Sky Sports, watching old games and going on YouTube, watching my old favourite players like I was a kid again, to be honest. Um, and and it just, you know, you just, you feel that hunger and and it's like, yeah, it's just like being a, a kid again. Like you just, you, when you can't do something, you want it even more, do you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, it's, it, it's great to, to be able to train at this point. Um, and hopefully soon we'll get some good news so we can move to the next stage. Yeah, hopefully we'll get some good news on the return uh, to playing. And, and Daniel, for you, uh, Corey uh, sums it up beautifully there about that feeling of being back out in front of crowds. I know SGS-wise, it's such an awesome place to be and, and hear that cauldron of noise. You must be missing it. I'm missing it a little bit, somewhat, um, but I have that in the back of my mind. You know what I mean? Like, it's um, season doesn't start till what September, and this is May, so May going into June, probably should get into training regimen. But I'm um, just trying to. I got, I got. I have it. I have it in my mind. So it's like, okay, you know, when basketball comes about, then I'll be ready to go. But in this meantime, just easing, the, enjoying the vacation, or enjoying this time that I have in my hands. So, yeah. Take this time yeah. and take stock. Well. Uh... <laughs> Sorry, Corey. Yeah, no, I was going to say just that. That's sometimes it is important to kind of switch off for a couple of weeks um, and take your mind because it is very like when you when you play a sport professionally, it is very intense. You're on the go all the time. That is all you think about. Do you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. it, it is important to have that little bit of time, like Daniel said, to just take your mind away from it, and then when you come back, you have that even more hunger and even more love for it, and you appreciate it even more. So. I, I definitely understand where you're coming from there. Well, let's hope it isn't too much longer, Corey, till you're back here playing at Ashton Gate. And Daniel, you enjoy the uh, space, time and reflection. And we'll look forward to seeing you back at SGS Wise in September, hopefully. All right. Thank you so much for having us here. Uh, have, having me here as well. I enjoyed the time and it was great chatting to you guys as well. Daniel, yeah, thank thanks you. very much. Corey, best yeah. of luck with the rest of the training. Don't forget yeah. the sunscreen. <laughs> I won, I won. Well, that's it from Bristol Sport TV for this week. Hope you've enjoyed the programme, hearing all about Bristol City's return to training and hearing how Corey and Daniel have both stayed mentally and physically fit during the lockdown. Do make sure you stay across our social platforms for all the very latest breaking news. Until next time, goodbye. <laughs>